Hey guys, Shalom, uh, Gabe here. I wanted to make another uh, video kind of reviewing, but you know what, this, this video actually is going to be more of a uh, preview than a review. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to introduce you to the Hebrew vowel system in this video. And uh, last week we spent an hour and a half reviewing, so I figured I would make this video more of a preview of the coming lesson and then kind of get your feet wet just a little bit in the Hebrew vowel system. So this coming Saturday, you'll have a degree of familiarity already with the vowel system. So let me take you back over 1,000 years ago to the city of Tiberias. Now the city of Tiberias, as you can see here on my screen, is on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. And our master, Yeshua, grew up on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he did a lot of his ministry in the north and along the western side of the Sea of Galilee. He occasionally did drift off and go over to the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. But this was predominantly a Gentile-occupied uh, territory over here. And if you recall, this is um, the land of the Decapolis, the Ten Cities, where uh, Yeshua actually... Um, redeemed, or I should say, um, uh, cast the demons out of a naked man living in the tombs, and he cast those demons into a pig, and they ran into the uh, Sea of Galilee. And over here, you can actually see the topography. When If you ever go to the Sea of Galilee, it's very steep. There's bluffs here, so very likely that a, a herd of pigs could run straight into the Sea of Galilee and fall off some sort of bluff or cliff and right into the water. So in Tiberias, however, uh, which is now a modern resort town and beach town and vacation town for uh, people living in the cities of, um, of Tel Aviv or, or Jerusalem or nearby villages. Um, as you can see, this is Nazareth here to the west. So uh, Tiberias um, became the home and kind of the central hub for a group of scribes called the Masorites. And they were um, a group of scribes. All they did was just copy... Um, the Torah, they copied the prophets, they copied the writings. So they um, made Tiberias their home base. Well, about a thousand years ago in this city, they developed a system that they called the Nikud. Nikud is a word which means the vocalization or vowels or, you know, essentially how to pronounce something. Because what the Masorites saw happening was as the Torah was being read in all the various Jewish communities in the Mediterranean basin, all, everywhere from Alexandria out into uh, you know, Turkey, you had, you had lots and lots of, of Jewish um, uh, synagogues in Rome itself and Greece already that, that dated back um, to the initial Roman conquest of the land of Israel. So you had these very large Jewish communities spread out you know, to, to um, the uttermost, uttermost parts of the earth, if you will. Um, even up into Antioch, there was a large Jewish population. Over here in Babylon, there was still a large Jewish population. And what they realized is that these Jews living in the diaspora, in the uh, galut, as they call it, the, the, um, the exile, uh, that were not living in the land, they were developing v very... Um, different vocalizations of the Hebrew text because there is a lack of a vowel system. I mean, take the word holy, kadosh, for instance. That one word can be pronounced a number of different ways. For instance, kiddush, kadosh, kedusha. Um, there's just a number of different ways that you can pronounce that those same three letters because there's a lack of uniformity in, in vowel systems. And they all mean the same thing, essentially. But take that concept and expand it to the whole Hebrew vocabulary in the Tanakh, and you have wide variations of how to pronounce certain words in the Tanakh. So what the Masorites did is they um, set out to, to establish a degree of uniformity in how to pronounce Hebrew words. And they did this about a thousand years ago in the city of Tiberias. And so sometimes scholars, Hebrew scholars will refer to this system of vowels as the Tiberian vowels um, or Tiberian vocalization. 
And uh, what it did is it really helped kind of unify the language and systematize the language so that all of these people living as far out as Babylon, this area out here, all the way over to, to Rome, were speaking and developing the same vocalization. People, in, you know, Jewish people and living in Alexandria and Egypt still, um, they were developing the same vocalization of these words. And I want to look real quick at a chart that you can, um, you can take a screenshot of this as I expand it. This is the vowel system that they developed. And let me introduce you to this. Now, what I don't want you to pay attention to is the middle column. I don't want you to look at this middle column in the blue letters right now. Just ignore that, okay? That's something that I don't even have memorized, all the, the names of the vowels. Um, I know a few of them, but really what I want you to focus on is the top column, and I want you to focus on the value, or how to pronounce that top column, okay? Now, let's start over here, right to left, since Hebrew is read right to left. Now, what we have done is we've taken the letter Aleph, Aleph, because Aleph is typically a silent letter unless given a vowel. So it's a good uh, kind of control letter that we can use to uh, really sound out these vowels, okay? So we have an Aleph, which is silent, and then we have this Vav, which they're saying is, is Shuruk, and that's the Vav, I tell you, he's catching the ball in his belly, so he's saying U, and they have a letter U, U there, uh, so it's going, this sound together would make an U, okay? The Aleph is silent, and it takes on the sound of the vowel given to it, and you already know this sound here, okay? U, okay? Now let's go to the next one. It's in the same family, as you can see, it's in the same sound. So this Aleph, by itself, if given this vowel, this kibbutz, underneath it, these three dots in a diagonal fashion, they are going to make the same sound as this right here, which is ooh. Okay, so this will be ooh, this will be ooh. All right. The next one, it says uh, you're gonna you're gonna make an O sound, an O, okay? And if an Aleph, if you see the little dot at the top left-hand corner of, of any letter, the sound, the vowel sound is gonna come after it is an O. Well, because Aleph is silent already, we're just gonna pronounce this Aleph with the holum as a O, an O, okay? Let's go to the next one. This one here, this little tiny T looking letter is called a kamatz, and it's going to be pronounced as an A, ah, A, ah, as an A H, A. Ah. Okay, so this Aleph right here would be pronounced as A. Ah. And this would be used in the word Adama or Adam for man or humanity. So anything like that looks like an A. Ah. This right here is called a Hirik, Hirik, and I tell people this was the baby mouse. It looks like a tiny little mouse nose, you know, it's like a cute little mouse. And a little mouse always goes, ee, ee, you know, it like makes a little squeaking noise. And so this is gonna go e, e, like a baby mouse, okay, e. So this Aleph, given the hirik, is going to make an e sound, almost like a double e, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. This is a sere, sere. It's two dots next to each other. Sere is going to make an e sound, e, as in e, h, e. Okay, let's go through and review what we've learned so far. We have U, U, O, A, E, E, and here is another E, okay, E. Really, they make the same sound. The difference, what I'm told, is the duration of how long you hold that E sound, okay? What I typically do is I pronounce this E, like a short E, and then this as an e, eh, like a longer, longer sound, okay? Um, and I'm, I'm hoping if someone watches this and they know uh, the vowel system a little better than myself, that they would comment down below and correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I pronounce this a little bit longer, a little bit longer duration of the eh sound, e, eh, okay? And that's a segol. The last sound that we're going to see here is, is called a pata, pata. And this is another, it's like the T that we saw over here. That's like the kamats, except it's lacking the vertical piece but it's still going to make the same sound as a, h, a, a, okay? So we have an a, e, 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 a, o, u, u, okay? Let me show you another chart that I think uh, you might benefit from. Let's go in here and uh, Hebrew vowel system right here. Let me expand this out. This is using a different letter. This is using the letter bait, bait, okay? 
we're gonna treat it as a bait, even though it doesn't have a dogish in there, we're gonna treat it as a bait, okay? So again, same vowels, different order, okay? Let's go right to left and we'll look at these. You already know this Vav. He's catching the ball above his head and he's saying, oh, I got it, oh. Okay, so this is gonna make a bow, bow, bow. And this is a cholam, bow, all right? Again, don't, don't pay attention to the words right now. I don't, I don't think you need to memorize the words right now in terms of what these, what these vowels are called. I just want you to know the sounds that they make, okay? So this is bow. This is a boo, boo, because he's catching the ball in his belly. He's saying ooh, so it's going ba, ooh, boo, okay? Same thing here. You see the kibbutz? He's going uh, the, with the three dots in a diagonal fashion. This is going to say boo as well, boo. So we have bow, boo, boo. Then we have the baby mouse, and he's going to go e as in a double e, a chiri, okay? So it's gonna go B, B, as in B, like a honeybee, B. Okay, so we have Bo, Bu, Bu, B. Then we have a Shva, and look at these three. They're all the same sound, okay? Shva goes Be, 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 Be. What I tell people is like, anytime you see multiple dots like this, multiple dots, more than one dot, it's going to be the E-H sound, the E-H, okay? Be, be, be. Okay, let's go back and review. Bo, boo, boo, b, be, 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 and then we have the line family all make the A-H, okay? Anytime you see one of these lines, these solid lines, the patach and the kamatz, they're going to make a ah sound, as in ba, ba, okay? Let's go back and try them all again. Bo, boo, boo, b, be, 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 ba, ba. All right, tov me'od, I'm sure you did a great job. I can't hear you, but I'm sure you did a wonderful job. One of the things I wanna to talk to you about real quick is this document right here. And you're like, whoa, this is really overwhelming. You're looking at um, a very, very old Hebrew script, a very old Hebrew document. This is coming from a document, actually one of the crown jewels of the Masoretes, the scribes that I told you about. This is their masterpiece work that they did. This is called the Aleppo Codex. The Aleppo Codex was actually written in the city of Aleppo in Syria, modern day Syria. And um, this is, I think, I want to say a 1,500-year-old Hebrew document. This is actually on display in the shrine of the book in the city of Jerusalem right now. And I got to see this with my own eyes. It's very exciting. So what you'll notice is that these are the normal Hebrew letters. We have a vav, a yud. We have, uh, this is a he, I believe it is, a he, and then a yud. Yeah, that's a, it's going to be a he, even though they didn't leave that open there. See, see how Hebrew changes a little bit. Um, you're looking at someone's handwriting. So you gotta take that into consideration that handwriting is gonna change from person to person, from century to century. And this is a 1500 year old document, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, let me actually, before I tell everybody the wrong thing over and over, let's go to Aleppo Codex. Uh, let's see the date. Let's see, let's go, to, let's go to Wikipedia. Okay. The Codex was written in the city of Tibet. Tiberius, oh, I'm sorry, it was written in Tiberius, not Aleppo, but I think it made it to Aleppo, and that's where it was really found. Um, let's see, when was it written? Okay, in the 10th century CE. So if we're in the 21st century, what is that, 11th century? So 1100-year-old document. That's close. 1100-year-old document, and this is what it looks like, actually. This is one of the pages of Deuteronomy. Um, I don't know if we can zoom in enough to actually be able to read it. No, we're not going to be. So let's go back to um, the photo that I had pulled up here. This is a photo, this screenshot I took of the Aleppo Codex. And I want to show you what the Masoretes did. Um, they basically gave these normal letters a vowel system so that we can pronounce them. Now there's a lot more stuff up here, like th these up here and this here, this here. I want you to ignore those. Those are some cantillation marks and some accent marks, okay? Just ignore those for now. We're not going to talk about those. But let's see if we can pronounce some of these words. Now, I don't expect you to be able to read this. This is a tough document to read because it's, it's, it's hard. It's someone's handwriting from 1,100 years ago. And, um, but I just want to show you how beautiful it is 
that the, just the level of consistency in the Hebrew language from 1,100 years ago, we can still probably make this out and derive some kind of meaning from it. And that is very uncommon, okay? So this right here is va ya he va ya he You see, so we have va va See, the, um, the, the line under there is going to make an ah sound. va ya And then we have a hey with a baby mouse. is going to make a he he So we have va ya he va ya he which means, and these are, uh, or, uh, and this is what happened, or, um, uh, let's go to the next word. This is a aleph, aleph, with an a ah sound under it, okay? So we're going to pronounce this aleph as an a. Ah. Then we have a chet. Now, here you can see the difference between a chet and a he. You see the overhang here with the he? And this is their chet, chet, okay? So you can see the difference there. So we have a a, ah, cha, because we're going to give this an ah sound. Ah, cha, and then resh, you see the backwards R, resh with the e sound. Yud with the e sound. Okay, so we're going to go ah, cha, re, ah, cha, re. See that? Ah, cha, re, which means after, uh, after something, okay? So we have, and it happened, or it was after, after what? Let's go to this mem. You kind of see the mem there. And then the mem has the vav catching the ball above his head. So this is going to go ma o ma o mo mo. And then we have this tav. Tav. See that tav? So this is, the tav does not have a vowel under it. See that? So we're just going to pronounce this one syllable going mot. Mot. Okay? Uh, this is saying basically, and it happened after the death, the death, okay? So who's dying here? Let's, let's figure out who's dying. We'll read a couple more words. Mim with an O sound, a mim with an O sound. Then we have a sheen, it's going to make an SH. And then we have this E sound under the scene. So we have mo, sh, e, mo, sh. There's no, there's no vowel here. So we're just going to make this a breathy, uh, like just a final hey, and it's gonna go Moshe, Moshe. So who is Moshe? That is Moses. So end it happened after the death of Moses. And then we have a ein with a e sound, ein with a e. So that's gonna say e. Remember ein silent. It just it takes on the sound of the vowel. And then we have a bait with a e sound, a bait with a e. And then we have a dalet. Do you see the difference in the dalet between the dalet and the, where's the resh? Where did the resh go? Uh, there it is, right there. See the resh? Very, very subtle difference. The, the major difference is this is going to form more like a 90 degree angle. And it's going to kind of come back a little bit. It's very, very similar. It's, so you have to be familiar with this text in order to know the difference between these letters, between the hey and the chet and where the words end and begin. You see, um, there's no, there's very little space here between the words. So you have to know the Torah in order to be able to read this. You know how, you have to know what's coming next, essentially. So we have Vayahi Achare Mot Moshe Eved. Eved. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. The word Eved means a servant, a servant, okay? Vayahi, and it happened, Achare, after Mot, the death, Moshe, uh, of Moses, Eved, a servant, a servant of who? Here we have the, the holy tetragrammaton, the name of God. We have, and, and what they did here, if I'm not mistaken, is they took the vowels of the word Adonai and they put them on top of the tetragrammaton so that when a reader came across it, they would pronounce it as Adonai, Adonai, okay? So we have Yod, He, Vav, He. All right? And we would pronounce that as Adonai. So, Vayahi Achremot Moshe Eved Adonai. And then we have Va Yo Mer. Va Yo Mer. And he said uh, Adonai. And, and said Adonai. So, Adonai is talking here. El to El Ye Ho. Shu, see that, see that, the, the U sound there? Yeho, Shu, Ah, Yehoshua, 
Ah, uh, so, so uh, after Moses died, Adonai Hashem is, a, is talking to, Mo, to, to Yehoshua now, to Yehoshua, who was the second in command. So you see that you see the interesting like that's one verse there the beginning of of a Torah portion which is called Achare Mot, and you have to be familiar with the text you have to be familiar with the narrative in order to read a text like this because you need to know where the story where the words begin and end and that's really cool so Vayehi Achare Mot Moshe Eved Adonai Vayomer Adonai El Yehoshua so basically he's saying. After the death of Moses, Adonai decides to start talking to Yehoshua, and he's going to give Yehoshua a command. All right, he's going to say, "You're in charge now." So very cool. You guys just helped me read a 1,100-year-old document. That's exciting, right? All right. The next thing I want to do, and the final thing I want to do, now that I've really overwhelmed you with the Aleppo Codex, is I want to go to this text right here. Now this is this week's Torah portion. Um, so you can see here we have Tets. Tetzave, Tetzave, no vowel points, but that says Tetzave, okay? Tetzave, that's this week's Torah portion. So let's try to read a little bit of this, if we will. Now, I want you to, to ignore these little dashes right here and this little backwards L right here. These are cantillation marks and accent marks. Just ignore them for right now, okay? Let's look, first of all, at this word, this word right here. We have a Vav, and it's saying E, a Vav with an E, an Aleph with an A, so we have Ve, Ah, and then a tav with the ah. So ve a ta, and the hey does not have any sound. So the hey is just going to be just a just a silent letter. Okay, just let it hang. So ve a ta, ve a ta, and these are and these are is what that's saying. Ata. So we say baruch ata Adonai lohenu melech haolam. Ata means you are or um, these are. Okay, ve a ta, and then we have a next word. We have Tet, I'm sorry, a tav <laughs> with an s sound, a te, and then we have a, a tz, a, a tsadi with an a sound. So it's going to go te, tsa, te, tsa, and then um, this is interesting because they have the dogish there in the middle, but I know that this word is actually pronounced as te tsa ve. So I'm not sure why that dogish is there, to be honest with you, that dot. Um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be pronounced te tsa ue. That, that, that would be incorrect. It's te tsa ve, te tsa ve, okay? So ve ata te tsa ve. And these are, this is the command, okay? So it's sava. Sava is like a command or an order, okay? So ve ata te tsa ve. This is the command. Et, et, so we have an aleph with the e sound, aleph, so it's this right here is going to say e, and then a tav, so it's gonna go et, et, okay? This is saying to or towards, okay? This is a, like a, um, I think what they call a, uh, a direct participle, I'm not certain. Um, so we have ve ata te tsave et, and then so who, who are we giving a command to here? So that's what we're about to get, that's what we're about to get to. Who are we giving a command to? This little dash tells us, oh, sorry. This little dash tells us to take a little breath. There's a little pause here. Let's go to this. This is a bait with a e, a noon with a e, and a yud. So this is saying et who? Be ne ya. Be ne ya. Be ne. Be ne. The sons. So let's go back. Ve ata te tsave. Et bene. So we're giving a command. These, this is the command for or to the sons or the people. Sometimes this can be, this can be uh, translated as people. So which people? Here's our next word. Yud with a baby mouse. So this is going to go ye, ye, a seen. It's going to make a softer S sound. Se, yis, yis. Now, there's a rule that I have to tell you. Now, I don't want this to overwhelm you, but anytime you see a shva inside the word, there is a rule that says you're not going to pronounce that shva, that it's going to remain silent. Okay, so this would actually be pronounced as yis. Don't say that vowel. Yis. Let's go to the resh. 
Resh with a ah. Yis ra. Yis ra. El. Yis ra el. Yis ra el. So let's go back and review. Ve ata te tzave et bene Yisrael. Ve a ta te tzave et bene Yisrael. Did you get all that? Okay. So this is just kind of give you a a, a quick um, familiarity with the vowel system with the nikud and i hope it did not overwhelm you again you're welcome to watch this video as many times as you want or as many times as you need um, and you're always welcome to tell me hey gabe you're moving a little bit too fast can you slow this down a little bit and um, i'd be happy to do that so on saturday i will teach the vowel system as if we've never learned them before so if you've watched this video you are ahead of the game and uh, we'll, we'll, you, Saturday will be nothing but a review for you. Um, so I hope, I hope this video was beneficial to you and I encourage you to, uh, what I did, let me show you what I did in order to find this vowel system. So go to, um, let's go to Hebrew uh, vowels like this and go to chart. So I'm Googling Hebrew vowel chart and let's see if we can find some Hebrew vowels in here. Um, let's see if this one is good. I like it when they use a letter as well. Um, yeah, this one isn't great. Let's. Mm, let's see if we can find one that's good. I like it when they throw letters in there with it. This this is pretty good here. I like this. This is an a, a, e, 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 u, o. Ooh, okay. I would print this out, like you just save it as a, as a JPEG on your computer, print it out. Um, here, if you want, you can take a screenshot of this or whatever you gotta do and print it out and then um, you know bring it with you to class if you want and we, we'll go over this, but you already have it in your disposal. And I will, um, I'll have everybody write this in their notes as well. All right, well thanks guys for watching. I hope this video was uh, beneficial to you and you learned something. So when we start learning the Hebrew vowels and we start reading with the Hebrew vowels, it's going to be really, actually, once you commit these sounds to memory, it'll actually make it far easier for you to read Biblical Hebrew. And then, eventually, you'll want to transition off of the vowels to be able to read a kosher Torah scroll, which, let me, let me show you um, what a, a Torah scroll looks like here in images. Um, the inside of one, actually. Let's see if we can find, let's go to images and see what we can find here in the Torah scrolls. Um, yeah, here we go. This is what it actually looks like inside of a Torah scroll. You see there's no vowels. There's no vowels. So you want to be able to transition off of the, um, the vowels when you get ready to read from a kosher Torah scroll. So this right here is our word, B'nai Yisrael. Do you see that? B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Saturday.